Mr. Roy of Franklin. Uh, Madam Speaker, I rise today in support of H. 4929, an act relative to step therapy and patient safety. And I want to thank the Speaker for advancing this measure and once again making patient safety a priority. And I thank the gentleman from the North End and the gentleman from Watertown for delivering this bill to the floor today with improvements and enhancements that recognize the need to strengthen the physician-patient relationship. And I'm grateful to the gentlelady from Cambridge who has been a steadfast partner on this legislation. And I thank the gentleman from Arlington for his contributions and guidance in crafting this bill. The pandemic reminded us of our obligation to be vigilant and protect vulnerable populations. Indeed, it was a helpful reminder that the moral test of a society is how it treats those in the dawn of life, those in the twilight of life, and those who are in the shadows of life. And for those vulnerable populations, access to medications is often a lifeline. This legislation sustains that moral test by removing needless insurance protocols that delay necessary treatment and access to medication. It removes the barriers that interfere with sound medical judgments made within the confines of the physician-patient relationship. Now we've heard countless stories of patients being forced to take drugs that their health insurers want as opposed to what their doctors think is best. It's that insurance practice called step therapy whereby the patients are required to try and fail on insurance preferred drugs before getting access to the drug their doctor knew would have the best chance of working. Sometimes patients are made to go through step therapy multiple times and defying logic, some are made to try and fail on drugs they've already failed on previously, causing them intense stress and disease progression. It results in more trips to the doctor's office, the emergency room, and hospitalizations, all which lead to increased health care costs. Take, for example, Anna, who's been living with juvenile arthritis since she was 11. The disease has had serious and long-term consequences for Anna's health that have involved multiple surgeries. Anna told me how she's been made to go through step therapy a whopping 17 times, including, in some cases, for the same drug she had failed on before. It's shameful and it flies in the face of the medical objective to first do no harm. And from doctors we've heard stories of frustration as they watch helplessly while their patients' conditions worsen despite appeal after appeal. For patients with chronic diseases like arthritis, diabetes, epilepsy, some cancers, autoimmune diseases, and more, there is likely no cure. It is stressful, but they remain hopeful that scientific innovations will help keep their disease at bay. Adding to their stress by delaying access to the medicine they need is unacceptable. We live in a state that has some of the best health care in the world. We can and should do better to protect our residents. Now this bill, as the chair outlined will ensure that all constituents in the Commonwealth can receive medicine that their doctors describe. And as he indicated, the bill is not going to ban step therapy, but it does provide exceptions to the protocol and requires an expedited appeals process in order to maintain continuity of care. We remain respectful of the insurers who we know are businesses, but we all pay our premiums and we rely on them for coverage in times of need. We are steadfast in our belief that all constituents have a right to have access to the medicines their doctors say they need. And more than half the states in the country have already enacted step therapy reform in line with what we're proposing here today. I thank the many volunteers and advocacy groups who shared stories and advocated for this bill. It's gratifying that we are here today addressing those concerns and taking action once again to promote patient safety. Finally, I again thank the speaker for bringing it to the floor, and I urge all of my colleagues to support the bill today. Thank you so much. 
Ms. Decker of